It is day five and the sounds of cleanup continue in western Kentucky. Power lines are going up, a sign that small areas of progress are being made in such a hard hit area. Folks are leaning on one another and finding small signs of hope amid all the rubble. Amber Philpot begins our coverage from Mayfield. Today, President Biden on the ground to see firsthand the resiliency of this small western Kentucky town, flanked by Governor Andy Bashir and the First Lady Brittany Bashir. The president stopping to greet two women among the rubble of what was a tax office. This sign might just say it all for the people of Mayfield, a community leveled by a powerful tornado. Angie Wilson's mother did taxes out of this office. She's been able to find some keepsakes, but not much else. It means a lot to me that she found the stuff that she has. Um, we're looking for one picture for my mom of her dad and we'll let everything else go. We talked with her before she met the president and she couldn't believe he was in her small town. It's weird. <laughs> We didn't think that as a small community of 10,000 people that we'd actually have somebody known that big come to our little bitty town, and it's scary. Yeah, we had a time. They're bundled up. In front of the courthouse today, dozens of volunteers honoring the lives lost. Pictures and hundreds of donated flowers serving now as a makeshift memorial. The people of Mayfield hoping that the president's visit here today gets them one step closer to rebuilding a place they call home. And that was Amber Philpot reporting. As Amber mentioned, the president uh, not only visited Mayfield, but other parts of western Kentucky today, including Dawson Springs. He surveyed storm damage with Governor Andy Bashir and other officials. The president spent much of the day talking to and meeting Kentuckians who lost everything after the storms. FEMA has deployed urban search and rescue teams, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is assisting with debris removal, infrastructure assessment, and power restoration. Four FEMA search and rescue teams are working here in Kentucky right now. For those without power, FEMA's already provided 61 generators. The Army Corps of Engineers has a temporary power install teams to ready to assist if needed. And we provided critical supplies thus far and a lot more to come. More than 100 people remain unaccounted for with thousands still without power. First Lady Brittany Bashir commented on President Joe Biden's visit today. She also tells us today is the first time she's seen the destruction up close and says she wants Western Kentuckians to know the government supports them every step of the way. What's important for the people of Western Kentucky to hear today is not only does he support them, but the federal government is going to be there to help not only with the cleanup efforts, but to help people pick up their lives. She says cleanup efforts will not take months, but years. Kentucky's First Lady is also helping kids impacted by those tornadoes. WYMT's Dakota Makers sat down with her this morning to discuss how she is helping and her reaction to the destruction left behind. Speechless. That is how Kentucky First Lady Brittany Bashir describes what she saw during last week's storms in western Kentucky. When the phone rang around 11.45 Friday night, to let Andy know that the first reports of damage and tornadoes had come in. You know, we turned on the TV like anyone else who had gotten those alerts. But says neighbors were helping neighbors as the storms blew through. In this horrible tragedy, this overwhelming sense of um, compassion and love was very overwhelming. She wanted to help Kentucky kids, especially as so many kids lost everything right before Christmas. So she came up with the Western Kentucky toy drive. You know, I decided that um, I was going to help Santa bring Christmas to every child in Western Kentucky. With more than 20,000 donations so far. If you think about the number of children who live in Western Kentucky, it, it's overwhelming. And we've had major toy companies offer to donate. Accepting donations at multiple locations and KSP posts across the Commonwealth. We're asking for toys from birth to 18 years of age to be unwrapped and new uh, for sanitary purposes. They are asking for $25 MasterCard and Visa gift cards. We also are hoping that those gift cards can be used in local stores that um, are able to be open right now in Western Kentucky. Bringing Santa's workshop to our neighbors. Dakota Makris, WYMT Mountain News. 
And the first lady said this afternoon during the president's news conference, he actually called her over and uh, said that 20,000 gifts had already been donated to that effort. They will be accepting donations through Saturday, December 18th. A crash in Perry County was caught on camera this afternoon. WSGS shared this video of a crash on Highway 15 near Long John Silver's in Hazard around 345. Now, it's not known if anyone was hurt. Now, this is known as a pretty dangerous intersection. We are told a woman was killed at this exact spot in 1978 when she pulled out of the restaurant and was hit by a truck. It's been a quiet day weather-wise around the mountains today, and we continue to see clouds, however, beginning to work in. And as they do, that's what's going to give us some milder temperatures overnight. US 119 camera at Pine Mountain. A nice sunset there in the far background. You can kind of see it there in the back as the camera turns to night mode, black and white there as we finish up that uh, particular run through into the low to mid 60s in many spots. Prestonsburg, our warmest spot, still at 67. They got into the low 70s for daytime highs today. Satellite and radar around the mountains. Not much to write home about other than those clouds working in. We take it to the upper Midwest, though, and it is a doozy. We have a big bowling ball of a low pressure working through eastern Nebraska, bringing severe weather to parts of Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, and eventually up into Minnesota, as we head later on tonight. However, we remain quiet here in the mountains. Partly cloudy skies turn mostly cloudy late with light south winds and temperatures in the mid-40s. I'll have the latest on when we could see showers return to the forecast coming up in just a bit. Steve. Evan, thank you. A Wayne County man is facing DUI and drug charges after he allegedly crashed into a car yesterday afternoon. Police say they arrested Andrew Gladish on Kentucky Highway 90. While investigating, police discover Gladish was not able to stop at a traffic light and his car slid and hit another car. Police say Gladish failed a sobriety test and they found illegal drugs on him. The person in the other car was taken to the Wayne County Hospital. A second arrest was made in an Elliott County cold case from 2015. Detectives arrested 63-year-old Randall Nichols in connection to an ambush-style murder of Kelly Glover. Glover was shot in the head and found lying near his gravel truck on a back road in rural Elliott County. In October, police arrested 57-year-old Brian Flannery. Troopers say more arrests are expected to follow. Lawmakers are expected to consider who will receive money from the rescue plan for hero pay. Last week, Governor Bashir said he will include social workers in his proposal for hero pay when he announced pay hikes given after the large exodus of personnel recently. Today, they appealed to lawmakers. This bonus could alleviate the negative impact as it could give the workers some incentive that they were appreciated for the work that they've done and hopefully those that are here would not leave and we could retain them. Teachers and teacher groups also said the pandemic simply made bad situations with turnover a lot worse. After a successful fall season, tourism continues to rebound in Corbin on the heels of a historically bad year driven by the pandemic. Revenue is up significantly year over year, allowing the hard hit industry to get back to investing in restaurants, hotels and attractions that bring folks to the area. The restaurant industry in particular is up 10% from the last holiday season, offering owners and employees hope that the worst is behind them. The good news comes as a bit of a surprise for tourism officials who had a less optimistic outlook at the start of 2021. I think that's astounding considering that the U.S. Travel Organization uh, had predicted that it, we would not see a rebound until 2024. Despite the gains in some areas, hotels still see fewer bookings than during pre-pandemic holiday seasons. WIMT Zach Hawk met with restaurant owners and will have more about what this rebound has meant for them coming up tonight at 11. Perry County Board of Education held a special meeting today with parents, teachers and community members and health care workers all in attendance. The decision at hand was whether or not students and staff should quarantine if they are exposed to COVID but have not tested positive. Several attendees spoke at the podium on why they do not feel safe doing away with this rule right now, including Kentucky River District Public Health Director Scott Lockhart. 
we are going to work with you to do what is in the best interest of our students, our employees, and this community. That is all that we are here for. We, we want to be the subject matter experts. We bring the information to the data. We work with the medical professionals, and we stand ready to work with you to keep our needs safe. Perry County Schools made mask wearing in schools optional not long ago. It is still not determined whether they will move forward with the quarantine guidelines or not. Kentucky State Police Post 9 celebrated Christmas a little early today, bringing around 60 kids from across the coverage area to take part in Shop with a Trooper. WYMT's Buddy Forbes tagged along as the troopers tagged in to help the kids find the items on their wish list. A group of gray uniforms in pursuit. So we're looking for Nerf guns. With their partners riding shotgun. All righty. Shopping, having fun, getting a bunch of toys and all kinds of stuff. Shop with a Trooper brought kids from the Post 9 area to Pikeville Wednesday for a day of Christmas cheer. I seen Santa and it was very, 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 super, very fun. fun. Bringing the annual tradition back. We're through now, bro taking a jolly journey through the aisles star. together. It was great to have the kids back in, in here shopping with us. Uh, you know, last year was nice to be able to deliver presents to their house and watch them unwrap them. But something about running down the aisles with them, watching them throw the toys in the buggy, just, it's a memory that you won't ever forget. As the sounds of the season <laughs> rang through the store like for a day full of giving. We would hate to think that any kid would wake up on Christmas morning and not have presents under the tree. So we're just trying to make sure that every child wakes up with a smile on their face on Christmas morning. From gifts given to kids. I got an RC car, a Nerf gun, a backpack. To the thanks given to the troopers. Thank you for all, for all that you have done. Filling carts. It's just a great feeling just watching them go in there and knowing that they can just buy whatever they want. Uh, and you know, a lot of times they may not be able to have that opportunity. Uh, so it's great to just be able to watch them experience that. And just, I mean, we built off that joy. While filling hearts. Yeah. In Pikeville, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. The kids were also treated to lunch at McDonald's and Christmas food bags were handed out to go to their families, all part of the mission to make sure they have a Christmas to remember. And I'll have the latest coming up on when showers arrive again, including how much rain we could see on the way. And we share with you what firefighters are saying to keep your holiday lights and decor from starting a fire. 